For about five years now, I've been printing these two-piece Cthulhu air plant holders on a slice that I did in Simplify 3D. Well, now I wanted to go ahead and give Prusa Slicer a try. Greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma, and today we are gonna talk about moving a project from Simplify 3D over to Prusa Slicer. For this particular model, I had to learn to replicate two of the features that I was using in Simplify 3D. Uh, first, the manual supports. I had used that uh, quite a bit in the slice for this model. So I had to learn how to use the paint on supports in Prusa Slicer. The second feature uh, that I was using in Simplify 3D are those multiple processes. If you've seen my videos before, you know I love those multiple processes. And I, of course, I was using a multiple process with the head. So in Prusa Slicer, I got to learn how to use modifier objects uh, where I can achieve the same end, where I can define a specific part of my model that was gonna get a little bit different settings. Well, let's go ahead and dig in. Historically, I've printed the Cthulhu air plant holder in Simplify 3D, and this is the older version, the 4.12, I believe. And what I had done at the time was use their support generation tool, and I manually added uh, my supports underneath just the the bottoms of the wings. Now, when I bring this model into Prusa Slicer, uh, by default, it wants to add uh, supports that in my experience I found that I don't really need for this model uh, for example I don't need supports underneath the fingertips I don't need supports in the crotch I really can handle the belly button okay as well as uh, these little insets uh, and the details in the wings uh, you can certainly update your uh, support uh, settings here, maybe play with the overhang thresholds or whatnot. Uh, but the way I would attack this is go ahead and use Prusa's paint on support tool. And uh, if you look at the little pop-up, it'll give you some guidance. And if you use your right mouse button, you can define areas that are blocking support. So I can come in here and right click and just kind of paint on, hey, I don't want supports here in the belly button. Then I just continue on using my right mouse button to define all the areas I don't want support. This process can be a bit of trial and error, so I slice, see how it is, maybe go back and make adjustments, and then slice again. Okay. I am liking where I don't have supports. I have found when printing this model, these little wing tips um, they are susceptible to wobbling because they don't have like a really good strong footprint on the bed like it's really tiny so I have found that it is a little more effective if I give it um, more of a cradle of support there so this is going to be an opportunity for me to do the support, support reinforcements so we'll go ahead and paint that on All right. Let's see what that looks like. I am feeling this kind of mimics the um, success that I had in Simplify 3D. So we will go ahead and save this and give it a try. Now back to Simplify 3D with the head of this piece. I, I did the same kind of thing where I used my support uh, tool to go ahead and add a lot of supports into these tentacles. Uh, there is a crevice in there for your air plant and I don't do supports there because I take advantage of bridging and I don't do supports in the little hex container because of bridging as well. Um, I do make sure for these tentacles, especially the middle ones, I kind of cradle them um, let's do this real quick. So here in the slice, um, I do have support on the front and the back of the tentacles to kind of cradle them and give them more stability so they don't wobble during the print. Now you might notice um, when I do it by process that I actually have two processes here. What I have found is there's cleanup involved with these tentacles and it's advantageous to have a little more thickness to the tentacles uh, so they're not uh, susceptible to breaking when you're cleaning up support um, but I really don't need that extra strength for up here on the the top of the head so I have a baby process that runs for the first 20 uh, millimeters of the piece and what I'm doing there is I'm adding a extra uh, perimeter um, two extra perimeters there to give it um, 
uh, more thickness and more strength there. Um, with the second process, what do I do? I just go down to th three shells, and you can probably get away with just two perimeters as well. So over in uh, Prusa Slicer, uh, I'll go ahead and start this journey with painting on my supports, and then we'll go ahead and talk about my process of adding extra perimeters just for the tentacles here. I'm using the same skills that I used with the body. I'm using the mouse's right click button to mark the areas where I don't want supports, like the cavity that I'm putting the air plant in, and this little hex connection. Then like before, I use my left mouse button to define the areas where I want more support, uh, like the tentacles. I do a slice to preview my work and I like what I see. I think this is going to be easy to clean up and provide the strength and stability to those tentacles as they print. Now let's go ahead and talk about mimicking those multiple processes that I had in Simplify 3D. I think default right now are we're doing two perimeters and I'd like to go ahead and tell it like hey the bottom section of this let's do some extra perimeters and what I want to do is right click on my object and add in modifier and then you have different shapes of what that modifier is going to to be um, it lets you highlight or like kind of encompass a section of your model that's going to have different settings so I'm just going to do a little box and uh, just as if you pulled in your 3d model here uh, you are able to um, go ahead and resize it so we'll go ahead and it's really big. we'll move it a bit a bit down so it's I'll get it a little bug up and we'll move it on top of that. So I have my little generic box. It looks, oh, let's move it down a bit. Oh, you know what? This might be actually better than the way I was doing it in Simplify 3D. Move this down a little bit. Oh, cool. Because I really don't need the extra perimeters there. I just need them when I get to the tentacles. Okay, so if I go over here and I hit my little edit icon, I can hit layers and perimeters, and I'm going to say, hey, we're going to bump you up to five. And then we're going to go ahead and slice it, and we'll go ahead and take a look here. Okay, we're starting with our object. Oh, we see two little perimeters, two perimeters, two perimeters. And now we're starting to see some more here and we're getting to our tentacles and they're really pretty solid because of all the extra perimeters and then solid 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 and then we get there and we have our two perimeters again for the remaining of the object in the end i was quite happy with how my print turned out well done prusa slicer if this is a model you are interested in printing, I do have it up on printables. I also include some notes and some screenshots kind of summarizing what we went over in this video of how I approach printing this model, uh, where I put my uh, modifiers or where I put my support blockers. I think it's very possible that you may have a different strategy for printing this uh, air plant holder. Uh, if that is the case, you find something that's very effective that you want to share with others, uh, please go ahead and either comment down below in this video or go ahead and comment on the model itself on printables.com. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you have a great day.